Thank you. If you forgive me, I was trying to transcribe onto my piece of paper because the printer didn't work, so I'm going to be uh, hopping from one thing to the other. Um, I'll not take um, too long, Minister. Every time I stand up here, it's a little bit like a, a case of Annie's confessions. What personal anecdote I can bring here today <laughs> that is informing my political views. Um, and I mean, and it is not any particular secret, and I'm going to focus on one particular area, that my own views on animal rights, they're not a particular secret. I, uh, I, like I assume, like many people in this House, abhor animal cruelty and personally believe that we have a long way to go towards living in harmony with our furry, scaly and, and winged friends. Um, and I don't want to stray too far from, from the topic at hand, so I'll just keep to the issue around animal welfare. You know, we are a country of animal lovers. Um, however, we're also a country that has had times, has had a poor track record in, in, in terms of accountability when it comes to animal cruelty. Uh, there are no circumstances, anecdotally, personal or even commercial, where it should be permissible to excuse or overlook um, animal cruelty uh, in Ireland. I do think we have relatively decent pro-animal legislation here in Ireland, but I would contend that we have woefully poor enforcement sometimes of, those, of that legislation. Um, every now and again, an image appears online of, of some dreadful, heinous animal cruelty, a poor mare, you know, and, and hooves overgrown, all these different things, and everyone piles on and goes, my God, that's terrible, that's awful, that's horrific, the poor animals, whatever can we do about it? And it, it really is not terribly often that the perpetrators are held to account. And there's a variety of reasons for that, whether it be tracing or, or other things, but it, we, we really do not hold, I believe, the perpetrators of animal cruelty to account the way that I think we could and should do so. And, and I think one of the reasons for that, Minister, is that it takes money to do this effectively. Uh, the Health and Welfare Act 2013 was a significant step forward for animal welfare in Ireland. Uh, the ISPCA and the DSPCA inspectors are authorised officers under this Act. Uh, they can instigate investigations into cruelty. But these charities, and they are charities, only have enough funding for a small team of inspectors, making it impossible to enforce this law effectively across the country. Um, all welfare charities have to share roughly about three million. Um, the rest is done on goodwill, volunteers and fundraising, and my family uh, fundraises regularly for Draw to Animal Rescue, a small organisation in desperate need of funding to help the animals that are in their care. So I have to confess when I hear some of the eye-watering figures that have been uh, reference today in relation to the industry that we are discussing. Um, you know, I find myself kind of reeling thinking about you know, my poor mother standing on West Street in Drogheda for a flag day trying to raise fun money so that we can feed some animals in the care. Like, there's a lot of money that's been invested into this industry um, and I would posit that perhaps we really need to consider how much money we're investing into animal welfare because when you hear the figures of billions and then we compare the figures of a couple of million uh, for animal welfare for some of the charities, that is an enormous gap. Um, and, uh, and as I said, uh, animal welfare charities do all of this very often off their own bat, of the goodwill of volunteers um, uh, and, and not a lot of, of state support. Um, so as I said, I don't think we do really enough on animal welfare in Ireland. And this is, is as I said, your responsi responsibility, Minister. So I'm switching to this where my notes are. <laughs> um, just some of the other things I think that we do need to do when we're talking about this and uh, around things of animal welfare. You know, things like microchipping of dogs. Local authorities spend an enormous amount of time having to try and chase up where dogs have come from. This will deal with issues around pounds. And proper resourcing for staff in the Department of Agriculture and local authorities is, is key to the full enforcement of the Animal Health and Welfare Act and the Dog Breeding Establishments Act and equine legislation. We don't need to have a nanny state where we're chasing after every single animal owner. The vast majority of animal owners are good, kind people, and people here have referenced animal lovers who are involved in this industry, but we do need better resourcing um, and, and, and support uh, in, in, particularly in that, in that sector. And the people who flout the law really do need to be held to account. I don't think there's anyone here who would disagree with that. And it's very frustrating, I'm sure, as people involved in this industry and not involved in this industry, seeing people giving animal lovers a very bad name. Uh, and and we've, we've heard the discourse over the past week over this, and unfortunately the, the, the really serious incidents of cruelty and abhorrent treatment of animals come to the fore, and, and those people seem to just get away with it. And that, and that does drive people's um, personal conviction around this area. So I'm aware that I've gone um, somewhat off keel, but I thought I would just focus on the animal, animal welfare issue. And I would say that there needs to be tougher sentencing for those found guilty of animal cruelty. There should be higher fines, jail sentences, and, and really for the most serious cases, life bans of keeping animals uh, to stop those, those found guilty of animal abuse from re-offending. So 
I suppose I'll leave the, that, those comments in your hand, Minister. There's a lot of people talking today about the people behind this industry, so I thought I would just take a moment to reflect on the animals behind this industry for whom you also have a responsibility as the Minister. And I would suggest you know, some of the areas around funding for the charities that are responsible for the animal welfare that sometimes get left dealing with the knock-off consequences of, of this industry and um, to look at how we can fund that better and support those people who are doing really important work around animal welfare and charities um, to find a way that this can be a quite a divisive issue and people are on both sides of it um, but people who come to this from a genuine love and, and care for animal welfare would really, I think, appreciate seeing uh, the department and you, Minister, taking that very seriously and, and really putting to the fore of the agenda that animal welfare, that we are a nation of animal lovers and that, that as a government, we are willing to put our money where our mouth is and to ensure that there is the adequate funding to ensure that all animals are taken care of. Thank you, Minister.